This week on Auto Mundial, a pair of fast pickup trucks as Ford's new F-150 Raptor takes on the Ram 1500 TRX. We also have new releases from Citroen and Acura, and we take a look at the new Range Rover. Plus, the Cupra Vaughan. Is it better than the Volkswagen ID3? That's all coming up, but first, the news. Volkswagen has revealed plans for updates to its MEB electric car platform. More range and more performance are planned, with a 0-62 time of 5.5 seconds targeted for the next ID badged model due to be released next year. The MEB platform, which currently powers various Volkswagen Group EVs, will also get a range boost up to 435 miles. This will, of course, depend on the weight and shape of the cars it powers, but all cars will benefit from a 200 kilowatt maximum recharge rate. When we first saw the Volkswagen ID3 in 2019, we always knew its electric MEB platform would pop up elsewhere in the VW Group lineup. This is the new Cupra Born, the Seat offshoot's first stab at an EV, and we have to say, it looks pretty good. The ID3 underpinnings are clear, but the Cupra design language and bronze badging help to distinguish it from its more conservative German counterpart. With the same platform as the Volkswagen, unsurprisingly, it gets the same powertrains. Entry-level cars get a 45 kilowatt per hour battery and a 148 brake horsepower electric motor driving the rear wheels. In this guise, it can reach 62 miles per hour from rest in 8.9 seconds and achieve 211 miles on a single charge. Next up is the 58 kilowatt per hour car producing 201 bhp. The range is bumped up to 260 miles, while performance also gets a boost, with the 0-62 time dropping down to 7.3. This system is also available on the top of the range 77 kilowatt hour car that can travel up to 335 miles on a charge, meaning you no longer have to go for a big, expensive saloon car if you want a long-distance EV. Inside, the Cupra gets a smarter, arguably more grown-up interior than the ID3's colourful cabin, with a pair of bucket seats up front and more bronze accents. Thanks to the flat floor and lack of engine, there is loads of cabin space. There are cubby holes and storage bins all over the place, while the legroom in the back is more similar to that of a limo than a hatchback. This is a growing sector of the market though, with lots of interesting alternatives, not least this, the Kia Soul EV. The head-turning little Kia gets a 64 kilowatt battery, good for 280 miles of range. Performance is decent too, thanks to a 201 brake horsepower motor. It's quick to charge too, with a 100 kilowatt charger getting it to 80% from empty in under an hour. The Soul has always been Kia's quirkiest offering, and the new version is no different with its new long and thin headlight design, but it still retains its boxy look. Also new is the boomerang-shaped rear lights, which along with a black painted strip surround the rear window. We think it looks quite good. Inside, the sole is very spacious, which is unsurprising given its cuboid shape, but the boot is a little bit of a letdown, with just over 300 litres of space. It has a smaller compartment than a Polo. Overall, though, we think Cupra is on to a winner. It's better looking than the ID3 and just as practical. Prices are yet to be confirmed, but we suspect it may be more than the equivalent Volkswagen. For 
the last decade or so, if you wanted a fast, full-size American pickup truck, you only really had one option, the Ford F-150 Raptor. However, with the recent release of the absurdly powerful Ram 1500 TRX, the Raptor was on the back foot. Now though, Ford has fought back with this, the new F-150 Raptor, unveiled just six months after the overhauled regular F-150. While the styling may look largely unchanged from the previous Raptor, with a big Ford script in the grille and muscular swollen arches, this new model has plenty of changes, both outside and in. Ford reckons the styling was inspired by the F-22 Raptor fighter jet, which seems like a bit of a stretch to us, but the new air intakes and bonnet bulge look undeniably cool. It still looks as mean as ever, with a wider stance and some new optional 37-inch off-road tyres. To complete the desert bashing look, ground clearance has been increased to 13.1 inches thanks to some next-gen Fox internal bypass shock absorbers designed to soak up massive impacts by adjusting the damping depending on the position of the wheel, even when the truck is airborne. Suspension travel all round has been increased by an inch, while the entire rear end running gear has been completely modernised to improve handling both on and off the road. Under the bonnet, there's still no big V8 like you get in the Ram. Instead, the Ford uses a tweaked version of the old 3.5 litre twin turbocharged Coyote V6. But don't think that means the Raptor is all show and no go. Pour yourself up into the cabin and you're greeted with a much sportier interior than you'd find on a regular F-150, with plenty of Alcantara and some body-hugging seats. It remains as practical as ever though and absolutely packed full of tech. The new Raptor looks impressive then, but what if you don't want a 3.5 litre V6? What if you want something a little scarier? Well, you'll want this, the outrageous Ram 1500 TRX. Oh yes, Ram has done things properly. There's no puny little boosted V6 here. Instead, under the bonnet lies a monster, a fully-fledged muscle car legend of a motor, a Hellcat. More commonly found in the likes of the Dodge Challenger, this 6.2-litre supercharged behemoth produces 692 brake horsepower and 650 pounds-feet of torque. Yes, that's right, almost 700 horsepower in a pickup truck. Like the Raptor, it also has a beefed-up chassis to cope with some serious off-road punishment as you take on some of Baja's biggest dunes. The suspension has been revised both at the front and at the back with a specially developed set of Bilstein remote reservoir dampers. That fabulous engine has also been modified to adapt it to off-road driving. The airbox has been moved to the top of the engine to get cleaner air during high-speed desert driving, while the oil pan has been toughened up and the alternator moved higher up to increase the wading depth to 32 inches. Like the Ford, the Ram has a host of different driving modes to suit any environment you might find yourself in. The Baja mode has been specifically calibrated to work in Mexico's sandy peninsula, famous for its off-road racing and car-destroying terrain. The extra horsepower means the TRX can hit 60 miles per hour from rest in 4.5 seconds and run the quarter mile in 12.9. It's quicker than the Raptor then, but perhaps not for long. You see, Ford hasn't taken kindly to being out pickup by Ram and has now announced a new Raptor R due to be revealed later this year, complete with a Hellcat rivaling V8 motor, like the one from the 760 horsepower Shelby Mustang. For now, though, the Ram is king of the hill, and the desert for that matter. 
After the break, the new Citroen C3 Aircross and the Range Rover. Coming up in part two, we check out the new Range Rover, but first. Over in North America, Honda's premium spin-off brand, Acura, has been busy. Almost all of its relatively small lineup of cars has had a recent major overhaul. The NSX supercar may still be the flagship, but in the past two years, the TLX, RDX and Integra have all received significant updates to try and reinvigorate the often overlooked brand. And the latest car to receive a welcome makeover is this, the MDX. The flagship SUV of the range, the updated MDX, gets plenty of tech and a V6 with an all-important third row of seats. Entry-level versions get the same 3.5-litre V6 as the old car with 290 horsepower, while the higher-spec Type S model gets a smaller turbocharged 3.0-litre motor producing 355, which should provide plenty of shove when the first cars hit the road early next year. There are plenty of trim levels to choose from, starting at around $48,000 and rising to well over sixty dollars for the Type S. The best value option seems to be the $52,000 technology model, which comes as standard with leather, ambient lighting, autonomous safety tech and a posh stereo with 12 speakers. Like the exterior, the inside has been given a good going over too and feels much more premium than the previous generation car. Naturally, it gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as built-in navigation and its own Wi-Fi hotspot. Unfortunately, however, there will be no hybrid version available from launch. The old MDX was available with some electric assistance, but Acura apparently has no plans to hybridize the new model, an unusual decision for a 2022 SUV. Those looking for an electrified premium seven-seater are therefore better off going for a Lexus RX or Volvo XC90. But there's no denying that the Acura MDX is an interesting new option in the seven-seat Luxo 4x4 class. While there's currently no shortage of funky little crossovers on the market, we've always thought that one of the coolest was Citroen's funky little C3 Aircross. And now, for 2021, it's had something of a facelift. No longer the happy-looking bubble it once was, the new one looks rather angry, which Citroen says gives it a more assertive personality. Well, that's as maybe, but it's certainly striking. Design inspiration has clearly been taken from the new C4, but we're not quite sold on such a menacing face on a cute little high-riding hatchback. The two layers of front lights remain, though now much more angular, while the deeper front grille makes it look bigger and taller than before. Changes to the interior are minimal, with some new trim options and improved infotainment, but driver assistance has been improved. The Aircross now comes with automatic emergency braking, speed sign recognition and headlights that can dip automatically. There are some more optional tech updates too, including a head-up display, top-down parking camera, as well as some trick off-road gizmos like hill descent control and selectable grip control to help make the most of the little Citroen's ground clearance. Despite its off-road credentials, however, the C3 is strictly two-wheel drive, with engine options in the UK limited to a three-cylinder 1.2 petrol engine with either 108 or 128 brake horsepower, and a pair of diesel options with 108 and 118 bhp, respectively. 
But as we know, this is a very crowded sector of the market, and it is not the only one with distinctive styling on its side. The Nissan Juke, for example, may be divisive, but it sells in huge numbers and has a loyal fan base. Then there are newcomers like the Skoda Kamiq. With much more conservative looks, it may not turn as many heads as a Citroen, but its low price and VW Group build quality mean it cannot be ignored. Ultimately, however, with so many crossovers for buyers to choose from, the C3 still stands out thanks to its spacious cabin, nippy engines and its French design flair. For over 50 years now, if you've wanted the pinnacle of luxury 4x4s, there's been no better option than the Range Rover. Originally designed as a Land Rover you could use every day, it has evolved over the decades to become as much of a limousine as it is an off-roader. Its success has spawned endless copycats, with everyone from Rolls-Royce to Lamborghini now offering their own take on the Range Rover. And now there is a new one. Just the fifth generation car in more than 50 years on sale, the 2022 Range Rover needs to be a success for JLR, who recently reported losses of over 300 million pounds. On the face of it, you could be forgiven for thinking this is nothing more than a facelift of the outgoing car. The two do look very similar, but the longer you stare at the new model, the more new details you notice. It is a fantastic piece of design, with an elegant front grille and unique rear lights. The overall silhouette is very similar to the old cars, but it looks thoroughly modern. Massimo Fraschella, Land Rover's design boss, has said the Range Rover's look was crafted with reductionism to try and create an understated take on a luxury car. To that end, all engine and trim level badging has been ditched, with each car simply marked as a Range Rover. From launch, the new Rangey will be available as either a short or long wheelbase. Regular sized cars have seating for five, while the long wheelbase models are extended by 200 millimeters to allow an extra row of seats in the back. If you don't intend on carrying lots of passengers though, each wheelbase can be specced with just four seats, allowing for more luxurious chairs in the back. Up front, the new Range Rover's cabin is another example of the reductionist design attitude. There are fewer buttons than before, with many of the controls now accessed via the stylish PIVI Pro infotainment screen that sits in the middle of the simple but elegant dashboard. As we've seen with plenty of other high-end cars in the past couple of years, it has a full-width horizontal air vent and a two-spoke steering wheel. Naturally, leather comes as standard in all models, but buyers can choose vegan alternatives if they wish. An electric version has been confirmed for 2024, but from launch, the Rangey gets an extensive engine lineup. There are two plug-in hybrid options, various mild hybrids, and a full-fat BMW-derived 4.4-litre V8 with 523 brake horsepower. We doubt many UK buyers will opt for that, but there are still diesel engines available for those who want to keep things simple. Crucially, the Range Rover retains its Terrain Response 2 system, which should mean it can go anywhere the new Defender can. These days, however, the Range Rover isn't the most luxurious off-roader money can buy. This is the Bentley Bentayga, one of the most opulent cars money can buy. It may not quite have the mud-plugging abilities of the Range Rover, but its cabin is magnificent with stunning wood trims and endless customization options. 
It also has a hybrid option, while top spec cars get an enormous 626 brake horsepower W12 motor, which can propel the massive SUV from 0 to 62 in under four seconds, onto a top speed of 190 miles per hour. However, as impressive as it is, the Bentayga is pricey, making the £94,000 Range Rover seem almost like a bargain. At the end of its production run, the outgoing Range Rover is still a class leader. The new one then ought to set a new benchmark. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we take a look at the new BMW X7.